Greece is looking for ways to roll over debt as Germany worries about Euro states repaying debt. Spanish and Italy's bond yields fall, but markets are still looking for them to ask for aid. Futures are quiet as Foxconn goes back online after a one-day disruption for Apple. I'm Brittany Umar, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street, and together we bring you Morning Call. So European debt crisis concerns are back in focus and have been weighing on U.S. markets. Futures are up a little bit this morning. So, Scott, tell me, how much do the headlines concern you? I feel like we've been dealing with these headlines for a year, and every now and then people obsess a little bit more. And recently, it's been quiet over the past month, ever since you know uh, Draghi came out and, and said that he's going to do everything in his power to keep the Eurozone together. We talked about convertibility risk. People didn't want to wake up you know, in Greece and all of a sudden be back to the, you know, the drachma. And I think that's been taken off the table. And now people are sort of worried about the particulars. When is Spain going to actually ask for their funding so they can get it and get the conditions? Because right now their bond yields have been brought down because of having the bazooka you know, behind guys that don't want to be short in front of it. Then you still have what's going on in Greece as far as when are they going to roll over their debt? What kind of restructuring can that can take place? But I think these right now are just minor details and the market is taking it in stride. There's been nothing you know, to blow up about. So that's why I think things have been relatively quiet. And the S&P is still holding above key moving averages. So what does that signal to you? It signals to me digestion. Some bears out there are saying stalling. You know, they've said that the last two times. And obviously, as you go higher, you're a little bit more prone to a pull in. But it's the same type of pattern that we've been in. And if you look here at the chart of the S&P, you will see, you know, just say, taking a macro view, ever since that low on October 4th, we've been just on a methodical uptrend where low, higher low before we peaked. Then you had the move down in after the first quarter where June 4th we had another outside day low. Then you had this you know, cup and handle type pattern get put in place. We take a closer look here to see the actual movement within it and it's been very controlled and it's still very controlled. You know, if you recall before the, you know, the Draghi stimulus, you know, once we put in that outside day around 1424 when we traded through the prior high and failed and that gave us a little bit of a consolidation period, this was 11 sessions. 11 sessions of choppiness, 11 sessions where if you bought highs, you got in trouble, shorted lows, you got in trouble before breaking out. Then you had the four day consolidation flag pattern before our actual Big Ben came in and stimulated the market again. And now, you know, we're in this little zone. It's really only about this is the seventh session. So if this was 11 and this was four, I think that this can go on for a little while longer. So right now you have, you know, defined support at 1452 above the eighth day. You have some resistance above 1460. And then with some time, I think we might get a catalyst or so as we enter earnings season. And that could take us to new highs on the year. But for right now, I think less is more. So with the choppy action that we've been seeing in the past few sessions, should we be holding back a little bit, practicing some restraint with our trades? Restraint is good. I know a few uh, traders on my floor yesterday that wasn't restrained and they had a few keyboards broken for no reason. So in times like this, you know, you don't want to give any money back. There, you know, there are times when you could press, times when things are moving, times when you could you know, have a really good month or a really good week. And there are times when you take a step back and just let the market come to you. And that seems to be one of those times. Let's turn the focus to the financials, which were the first group to go green yesterday. JP Morgan joined the bank's rally early yesterday. What levels are we watching this, with this stock? Well, first, before we get into JP Morgan, I just want to show the XLF because, you know, the financials have been, even though it's a laggard group and it's been lagging for the past few years, you know, in the last three months, it's given us a lot of clues on, on, on action. And if you look at the XLF, you will see that, you know, right around here, around September 4th or 5th, you know, it had a nice breakout, just like the S&P flagged and then it continued higher. But if you look at this day, this was an important day for market timers because it traded off the highs first when we hit 1474 on that Friday. And since then, it's had a nice methodical move to the lows. So, you know, I think we got a cute short in there. Yesterday, I did buy back some XLFs. I think with a bit more time, perhaps it can create a little pattern here, a sloping nice pattern where you could buy the dip and then add perhaps when it starts getting above 16. And like you said, um, JP Morgan, uh, started to lead the way yesterday. And um, I'm not sure, but you know, would you think that this one could be a leader moving forward? Well, potentially we did see it join the, the group early, the rally early. So what do you think are the short-term levels that 
the levels that short-term traders <laughs> should be watching. Well, uh, there, I think every trader, every market participant should be watching it. And, and like, like Brittany said, you know, if something moves first when you're in a weak tape like we saw yesterday, typically you go with that and then, and then it shows more relative strength as the day progresses. And if you look at the chart of JP Morgan, you will see, you know, this, this, look at this flag type pattern. It didn't even, you know, pull in towards uh, the 21. It's still holding the eight getting nice and tight. I did not buy this yesterday, but I will be looking at it the next day or so. If it could start getting above 4170, this could be back in motion, you know, which would help the market. Last time it had a nice move was right here. This is when I was long it. It was long on this nice move, and I think I sold it into this. And now consolidating again, and I'll see if I want to add to it for, for another move that should be you know, to highs of the year. But you did nimble on Goldman yesterday, so tell us what was your game plan with this stock? Uh, Goldman, I just it has bigger ranges, so I don't have to take as much size. And yesterday, I was caught up in a lot of other things. So you know, anyway, so with Goldman, um, this is a stock that on that Friday we got short. You know, after failing to make some money with it, you know, during the last potent move to the upside, and and, and it had a nice controlled pullback, and it has been acting well. Goldman Sachs actually looking at this chart here. This broke out on look at the date, nine five September fifth. Look at this potent move to the upside. That was actually before J P Morgan. JP Morgan, look at September 5th, was in this little tight range still. So that gave us clues to be a buyer of JP Morgan and the rest of the banks because JP, you know, Goldman was ahead of the charge. So I said, let me go back to what was providing us leadership over the past few weeks. So anyway, you know, here it is, nice, nice little uh, you know, hammer bottom, so to speak, or it could be a little bit of a red dog reversal. I'm in some, I'll use the low as a stop. And then this too, you know, if it can get back in motion, it's gonna have to start to break above this area and above this area is about, you know, one either you could use 118.40 or you could use yesterday's high which is 117.43 but for right now you know it's worthy of, of a buyback especially if you sold it into strength up there and wells fargo finished in the green yesterday bounced off the 21 day moving average so at what level could we see some real momentum come into this play see well wells fargo is a little bit different it's not much of a momentum name but it's been a quality quality long this was the first you know, big, big bank to make new highs. So investors have been really choosing to just sit in this one. And I, for some reason, my traders have been, you know, looking more towards, you know, Goldman, JP Morgan, and even Bank of America. But overall, Wells Fargo hasn't had as many problems as the rest of them. It hasn't been in the news. And it's been best in breed. So if you're an investor, you know, just kind of use your tier system and, and buy dips there versus playing breakouts. And SunTrust Bank's STI gained over 2% yesterday. Now it's running into short-term resistance. So do you think it'll have enough gas to break through it? I, I think it's going to take time. This is had a big move. And I know we've had Stephanie talk about it here. She's loved it in the, you know, AA, you know, her Action Alert Plus. And I think she said she was selling it to some of the strength, rightly so. And this one, like Wells Fargo, made new highs. You know, Goldman, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, none of those have made new highs. So investors had had a time that was a little bit better. But if you look at the chart of SunTrust, you will see it for a regional, unbelievable. Really nice move. You know, look at, you know, uh, this pattern, this, this rounding pattern to the upside. This is when, you know, traders got a little excited when it started to break out. And then you had a really nice move into the peak you know, from, from the most recent move of 26 to above 30. And then yesterday, as the banks got stronger, you know, this too also had a, had a nice strong day. So at this particular point, it might need more time, but you do have some box type pattern right here. And if it were to get above uh, 29.19, it could be on its way. But I wouldn't be, you know, just like the market, I don't think we're gonna get so much momentum for breakout moves. But if you wanted to nibble in this area as a 21 day plays catch up, I think it's at least a tier one. And then there's Bank of America, who closed in the red yesterday. Are you expecting more selling pressure on Bank oh. of America? You know, after, after this, you know, what, seven session consolidation, it's still above $9. So I think it's breeding some confidence. We've had Bible patterns in it. I was on Bloomberg. I think sub $8, giving a call spread that got fulfilled. It was supposed to be fulfilled in December. In September, just like most of the market, it met a lot of our projections earlier. So you have to figure out what the new projections are if you want to make new ones or you just want to that's i think what's going on in the market now a lot of people that were involved for a rally saw where their projections were and, and got out now they're either sitting pretty and they don't have to do anything or people missed it and they're waiting so it's like that push pull but anyway you go to bank of america you look at the chart here overall this too has been trading very well technically okay um the last buy price was right here when it cleared this descending little channel okay when it went above this 820 and from there you had a big move all the way up to 971 you know you, this is the prior high so you know some sellers come out that might have been stuck there controlled pull in 
went green yesterday. You know, I, I think buying it in, in this like eight eighty nine dollar zone will be okay. And at some point, you know, the, I, I would put a, a decent sized probability that it winds up taking out this nine fifty nine seventy area. And for this year, it could see over ten bucks. But at this point, I wouldn't be getting it so big. But you know, don't not be involved tier one here for Bank of America. It's actually acting okay and warrants it. Coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with high beta tech. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer for T3 Live, and I would like to invite you to join us on October 6th and 7th in New York City for our first annual T3 Live Active Trader Super Conference. The two-day event will focus on what we believe to be the five keys to being a successful trader. We will teach you the strategies, tactics, and mindset we take to the market every single day, and you will leave the Super Conference with a personal step-by-step -step success blueprint. Visit t3live.com and click on the education tab on the top of the page and watch preview videos of this event. Seats will fill up quickly, so be sure to reserve yours today. My colleagues and I look forward to meeting you. Have a great day. We're back and going in the trenches with high beta tech. First up, Google. Despite a choppy market, the stock keeps riding higher. Had a nice move yesterday. It's been riding the eight-day moving average and now is a little extended from it. So would you take your trades here? I think uh, trimming trades here is definitely prudent. And there was a lot of excitement around this name yesterday. And I was trying to just contain people saying, okay, don't get excited now when everyone gets excited. That's when you sell some. Get excited if you bought it four or five times with the calculated entries that we've talked about over the course of the past six weeks ever since the reported earnings. This was a stock we focused on coming into the year. First, second, you know, first and second quarters were a little choppy. You might have even lost money trying to trade it, but then if you stayed the course, looking at the patterns, you got paid handsomely. And if you look at the chart here, you know, after this quarter's earnings, which is right around here, this was your telltale that Google was back in vogue when it broke above this downtrend, held above 600. Here is entry number one at 625, entry number two at 645. This was the high of the year, so it's always good to buy through there, especially if it holds, went through, held right around there, and then pow. Last buyable strategy was right around the, you know, when it pulled into the 21 day moving average and held, and then you could have added as it broke above this high. So at this particular point, you know, here at 750, after an enormous move like we've seen, even if it goes higher, I don't want to see you initiate a new position. I'd rather see you take some off the table and we'll look for another setup in it moving forward. And shares of Apple did slide yesterday upon news of the Foxconn plant shutting down and disappointing iPhone 5 sales. Kind of crazy to call over 5 million units <laughs> disappointing, but there were analysts looking for 10 million. So do you think we'll see more short-term weakness in store for Apple? I think we could see like another day or so of people trying to figure it out. I know that expectations start to go to 8 to 10 million and they reported 5 million. Some people are saying it's really 5 plus 2 because of the pre euros which is 7. And most sell-side guys I know they were at seven, eight million, so they can't, you know, uh, the excitement that others create or some irresponsible big numbers that weren't met, you can't really fault the company for it. The problem is, is that the demand is, is exceeding the supply. So yesterday you had a perfect storm also, like you said, with Foxconn, you know, riding, who knew if they were going to be out of work for a week, a month, a year, it was a day. So I do think Apple will get its footing. I do think there's some good news that should be coming out over the next week or two as some of the supply gets out there. I know I want my phone. I still didn't get it. My wife wants her phone. No one like even wants to deal with these lines. I even talked to my tech guy who should have got me on order anyway, Ruben, and it hasn't come in. So with that said, there's a lot of pent up momentum. You know, I, I do still think that this, this iPhone is going to be like what Cabbage Patch kids were to, you know, the, the 80s, you know, for this holiday season. But, you know, the market likes to, you know, just punish some chasers, punish people that want to get involved at milestones. So we'll see where we hold. And if you go to the chart, which is what I follow and not the, you know, the, the rhetoric out there. If you remember after missed earnings, this was like your first Bible pattern as it went into the gap. It was fast, fierce, showed you that this gap had no power. Then you had a nice move above 620, a nice move above the 644 highs, consolidated again. The day that they introduced the iPhone 5, they typically like to sell it. They sold it actually two days prior. So this was your re-entry. So after a move above 700 from about 660, which is where it was, all the way up to 700, why can't this thing pull in a little bit? So it did give up the eight day, which it's been following, you know, and, and if you look right here, this is where it held the 21 day. So I think the stock will keep the exact same composure or speed if it could hold 
this 21 day moving average, if it could hold a big portion of this gap. So this is where I will be looking, but I'm not gonna just have an opinion say I have to buy here, it's gonna hold here. I'll see how it acts there. If it doesn't act well there, maybe there's other problems that I don't know about. And then you have the 50 day, which comes in all the way over here. And that would just mean the speed changes. But anyway, I am long some Apple. 683 is one point of reference. Here's a big support zone. I don't think this is the high of the year there. So macro investors stay the course. Intermediate uh, trend traders will try and figure it out and be cute. And Baidu perking up a bit yesterday, reclaimed its eight day, now sitting in front of the 21 day. So what now with Baidu? This stock's been broken and in a void for the past, I don't know, even like two months almost. You know, there is a, like a cute setup. People say, Scott, you know, why do you say cute setup, okay? Uh, okay? I mean, typically it's been a cute short because when the trend is up, that's the way you're supposed to trade. That's where the big money's being made. If you want to make cash flow, you look for a cute counter trend move, and that's what we saw there. So with, with a stock like Baidu that I think is somewhat broken, and you're looking for a laggard type trade off a bottom level, I call it a cute trade. So if you look here at the chart of, of Baidu, there is opportunity for people that aren't trapped. You have this small descending little channel here or, or little area. So it did come off the lows, showed a little commitment. Yesterday was strong. I guess people were also probably scared to be short because of the, the massive move Google had. So I would say above uh, yesterday's high of about 113.75 or 114, you know, you could see some follow through and then the moving average comes in around 118 and then here's 123. So it is worth a look. I'll be looking at it today. I'm not long Baidu, but if we could clear this area, you know, maybe we get a cute trade, you know, to the upside. But macro investors, you guys have been chopped up and, you know, here was your last time you could have been stopped out when you had this potent move through this upper support. When you get a powerful two day move like that, that shows you something's not right. And that's how you use upper level stops. And LinkedIn still basing at highs above its eight day moving average. What levels are you watching here? This one I like a lot. I know it's choppy up here because every time you know Facebook gets hurt or there's a bad media report, everyone thinks, oh my goodness, I can't hold LinkedIn. But LinkedIn separated itself from Facebook uh, way back when. You know, this is one of the three stocks that we said could give you huge moves because it's a new issue, it has all the requirements. And right now it's hovering above 121. I am long sum and I'm looking to see if I can get a momentum trade here. You look at the chart, you'll see that um, overall on a macro sense, we talked about this many times and look, you know, look where it is. It's hovering right near the highs from the first day. Okay, that shows you strength. Last time we said the Bible pattern was right around here, right around 110, 111. You know, so that's about 11 points higher here besides within this earnings move. So at this point, you know, I do think that it's holding up well. It's, it's on my A list meaning that if it starts to get above this level with volume, I will add to it in this pattern right here, right above, what is this? This is 124.20, this is 125.50. It's gotta get above 125.50 with volume and then hold above it to show some commitment to get that momentum trade. So we'll see if that happens in the next few sessions. Well, speaking of Facebook, not looking so pretty, giving up all key moving averages yesterday. Where's the next level of support? Ugh, Facebook. Every time it looks good, someone writes some kind of note and, and it gets bashed. You know, and, and I know that we've talked about a strategy here. We had almost four Bible strategies that, that paid you pretty well. So even if you were lighter coming into yesterday because it was acting decent on Friday, it still hurt. And I know myself, Sprung, some of the guys, we still had some Facebook because it was warranting us staying with the trade. And then yesterday, you know, we got blindsided and you had to either salvage it or stay with it. And if you look at the chart of Facebook here, you will see, you know, down here at this level, it was, it was a, a nice calculated buy. Remember the, when Zuckerberg said it'll be there for a year, company bought bad stock. That was, you know, at least day one to look to see if it starts acting better. This was the real calculated buy when it went above, what was this, 1940? You know, and then you had another buy when it cleared uh, 2148. And then another one we talked about when it cleared 2205. So when it's, you know, flagging in this upper end, like before this day, you really couldn't see that coming. Okay, so you were allowed to be in a tier one and the, the, the choice was, did you salvage it or did you hold through and you're sitting around? I actually chose not to sit around. I wound up getting stopped out of the majority of it, probably around, you know, I don't know exactly where, but some, somewhere around here. P.S. Okay, it is holding this gap. So if you're still there, if you want to have a stop, I would use the low here of about 2036. That is your area to trade it against. If you're uh, you know, not involved and, and you sold into this strength. Congratulations, you saw it coming. I did not, you know, so maybe trade versus level for this stock to be any good. It has to hold yesterday's low, go sideways and then continue. So that's the, the level to trade against. All right, let's pick up the speed here with some <laughs> quick hits. Las Vegas sand, short term downtrend controlling this stock. What, what levels might you be interested? Um, this one has been going, it capitulated, 
flag, go up, flag, go up, flag, go up. Let's go to the, the tape right here one more time. Can you get another flag? Here you go. If it starts getting above 46, I do think some traders might trade it for momentum, but this has happened so many times. And one of these times, it might not be as easy, but until that trend changes, I think it's acting okay, and I think you could stay with LVS. And GLD had a small loss yesterday, but still hanging on to more than half its gains from Thursday, still holding above support. What do you think? I think that it's still above the eight day moving average. Um, I would not be rushing to get into it. It needs some more time to consolidate. But overall, the trend in gold has been strong since August 21st. And retail RTH broke below the eight day moving average for the first time since the beginning of August. So short term selling signal. Let me take a quick look. I didn't look at this yesterday. If we take a quick look at the RTHs, you will see. Um, I don't think it's so something to worry about is it's provided leadership. You've had a very strong trend here. Maybe you, you go back to a tier one, but overall, you know, it's still above the 21 day. I would be more concerned if it broke the 21 day. And United States oil could not fill its bearish opening gap yesterday. So how are you positioning yourself with this name? With oil, I'm just avoiding. I think oil showed you a 10 last week. It was a lot weaker than the overall market. I think you have some lower lows to come, which ultimately will be good for um, the world, you know, lower oil prices means lower, you know, gas pump prices, et cetera. Take a quick look at the chart here for the trade. You know, this, this stock or, or this ETF, you know, broke its, its, its uptrend from the lows here on this day. Couldn't really bounce in order to, uh, you know, to work that off because some people are calling it a fat finger trade, which it wasn't. You know, and then boom, it's come all the way down. I think at this point, if you're not in there, maybe there's a little bit of a, you know, a, a, of a bounce potential here back to 3490. But look at all these moving averages curling down. That's going to be a, a brick wall of resistance. So, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I hope hopefully it trades to the downside and the market diverges from it because I think it's a positive, not a negative. All right, Scott. So what would you say is your main focus heading into trading today? Main focus is we're on day seven of this overall consolidation. Um, the market has been healthy. Uh, equity investors in every time frame has been rewarded. You still have stocks making 52 week highs. You still have stocks making spirited move up, moves off the lows. They're high liquid names. And, but you just might want to do a little less for now. We're also up a lot for the year and people are trying to figure out how to position. There's a little rebalancing going into the end of this quarter. You know, some people are saying that it's not chasing rebalancing. It's more like a rebalancing between equities and bonds. So we could be seeing that. I think we're going to have some new money coming in October. There might be some better catalysts. We have earnings coming on. And just realize that all stocks aren't created equal. Know when your company is going to come out with earnings. Realize if you're a macro investor and you're going to sit through it or you want to be a trader and take some in-the-money calls or some kind of option strategy. So at least you know your risk is premium paid. But at this point, you know, if someone put a gun to my head and said, Red Dog, do you think the highs of the year are in? I would probably say no. And with that said, <laughs> hopefully no guns come to my head. You know, maybe the bears will put a gun to my head. I don't know. I got some hate mail let's hope when, not. when I put those projections out there. <laughs> yes, let's hope not. So everybody, happy trading and have a great Tuesday.